What up, Stamp Gang? This is Sharday of Sharday No Days Off. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another installment of Self Summer. And this has been a really good set of sessions for me so far because it's allowing me to share with you all my journey toward self-care in hopes that it will also help you in your journey toward greater self-care and to recharge and refresh throughout the summer um and just work on being better like that is the big priority is for us to be better versions of ourselves if you are new to my channel welcome i hope that you continue to come back for my wellness self-care lessons but also for the travel because i'm a traveler and i share my tips and tricks for travel as well as my travel shenanigans all over the world it's always something and if you are a returning person thank you for continuing to stop by i hope you have subscribed if you're new if you're not new make sure you're subscribed if you're already subscribed Make sure that notification bell is on. And thank you for being coming part of my internet family. To chat with you all today um, a little bit about black mental health in particular, because you, know, you guys know, I don't know if you've noticed, but I am, I am black. And um, mental health has become such a large part of my life, but I also know that it's still you know sort of taboo especially in the black community and even in my own sort of self-care journey it has been um, it has not always been accepted when i first started my mental health journey i was in seminary working on my master's degree in richmond virginia i had moved to richmond from memphis and i moved again to a place where i didn't know anybody <laughs> But more importantly, the seminary that I went to, they are very serious about mental health, especially if you are clergy. They offered subsidies for their seminarians to go to therapists. And um, they were usually therapists who were also clergy, so they worked with spirituality and things like that. And that's when I started seeing my first therapist. Now, at the time, I was going through a lot as far as my relationship with my parents. I was on rocky terms with my mother and I was also attempting to forge a relationship with my father after over 20 years. And when I tell y'all that was kind of traumatic, I'm so serious, that was super traumatic. I went to visit him a few times to try to, you know, make amends and get to know him as a person and just mend that relationship in some sort of way or even not even mend it but reconcile that relationship so that I would be able to have more healthy relationships especially with men because um, a lot of my issues stem from the sort of deteriorated relationship that I had had with my father over the years and so that was a lot um, because at the time I wasn't talking to my mother and you all have seen my mom. Me and my mom are super close, but there was a point in our relationship where we didn't talk at all. And I was leaning more and more on my grandmother at that, that point in my life. My family's super small. I don't have, um, I didn't grow up with siblings. I have a sister and my sister lives in Memphis. Um, I decided for myself that maybe it would be a good idea for me to see a therapist um, and after talking to my seminary advisor, who is a wonderful black woman, she told me time and time again over the three years that I was in Richmond that I need a wise person and that I need to see a therapist. And she would tell all of her classes, she's like, if my therapist had not passed away, I would still be in therapy. And so she made mental health a priority, especially for uh, persons that were entering um, clergy and entering the church and all of that. So I, I took the subsidy and my first 
therapist, her name was uh, Reverend Beverly. She was a short uh, white lady. She was amazing. Her um, home was ten, like a 10 minute walk from the seminary. So I just walked to her house. And with her, I started working through the nuances of my relationship to my parents and really uncovering things about those relationships that had sort of created um, particular mindsets and habits out of me. So she and I started, it was like taking a yarn ball and we started picking those things apart. And um, when I first started seeing my therapist, of course, you know, my grandmother, who's good Baptist lady, was just like, do you really need to see a therapist? You, why don't you just pray about it? And I think a lot of African Americans um, experience that we're in the African American community, especially if you come from a family and a community that is very religious in one way or another, the solution is to pray about it. And um, I'm not knocking prayer because obviously clergy and you know all about the spiritual and all those things, but I do believe that. Um, you need the tools too because life is hard and um so this is sort of the landscape for what it looks like to be black and pursuing mental health is that it's still a little taboo people think that if you're seeing a therapist that you know you got a mental issue or you're crazy or you're on meds and that's not that's not the case Everybody needs someone to talk to that's an objective third party. It's important to have a person outside of your sort of um, support, chosen support system, your nuclear family and all of that. Somebody that has those tools to be able to help you unpack the things that have shaped you and made you who you are. Because everything that has shaped us has not shaped us in good ways. And so... You know, my goal is to sort of tell my story in order to help normalize black mental health, especially for black women. I think the weight that black women bear is so heavy sometimes and it's really isolating. And um, we don't always feel like we have someone to unpack that with. When I moved to Houston, the first thing I did was to find a therapist, mostly because I knew I was starting a PhD program and needed someone to be able to unpack those things with because it's no joke. And, you know, being in this sort of program brings up any sort of mental health um, issues that you've had and have not worked through. They do. They actually come up in your graduate program. So the first thing I did was to look for a therapist and I just literally got online and um, found a directory, an online directory of mental health professionals um, in Houston and then it gave me the options to filter out what I wanted. So I, you know, it was important for me to have this, this time around a black female therapist who also dealt with spirituality and women's issues and things like that. So after I distilled all those things down, I found someone. And um, my therapist now, she is amazing. And she's someone that I can talk to and she always tells me, if you feel like you're out on a ledge by yourself, don't hesitate to shoot me a text or get in contact with me so we can get you in here. And what I appreciated most um, about both Beverly and Dr. K, who's my uh, my present therapist, is that they allow me to really be myself. And that means there are lots of tears. Like I would go to their offices and just be in tears. Like we would start talking and immediately I'm like a snotty mess. But you need somebody that is a safe space for you to do that or to rage or to just be sad and they're not gonna be like, oh, you shouldn't be sad, you shouldn't be crying, you gotta get it together. No, you need somebody that says, girl, cry, let it happen. And then say, okay, well, what can we do to, 
mitigate this, this, and this. And that's the most important part of um, mental health professionals is that they help you to have the tools to handle when something triggers you or when life is just crappy. And there's nothing wrong with it. And I'm here to tell you that there's nothing wrong with pursuing um, help from a mental health professional. If you think you need help, go get help. And I actually was the one who, it was my sort of going and getting help from a mental health professional that led my mom to go seek out her first wise person. And, you know, and even my friends, my friends have gone to my therapist because they're like, yo, do you know a good therapist? And I'm like, I do know a good therapist. So I think that it's really important for persons of color in particular to not be ashamed of needing help and of seeking out mental health um, professionals to help you because it is there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with you for wanting to be a better version of yourself. There's nothing wrong with you for wanting to have better tools to handle when life gets challenging because life inevitably gets challenging and you should not feel like you're out on a ledge by yourself. So definitely find someone to talk to, look for resources, even if it's group therapy, a free group therapy session. If you are in college, go to your um, health offices, the health resource offices. They should have therapists or resources for therapists that you can talk to through the campus um look online to see if there is like if you want a specific type of mental health professional that deals with you know persons of color that deals with women that deals specifically with men if you need a male therapist or if you need a female therapist look those things up and a lot of places if they're not covered by insurance um they will work with they might work with you on a sliding scale based on your income um, but most importantly if you find it make sure that your therapist feels good to you if it doesn't feel good find another one and you'll know within the first couple of of meetings with them whether that person is a good fit for you and if they're not don't feel bad because they're not but you need to find somebody that is a good fit for you more importantly to help you to work through life's challenges as always, friends, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend and tell a friend about the channel. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.